What up, y'all? Welcome back to the motherfucking channel. Today, what we're gonna be talking about is three objections that people are pretty much getting every single time that they hop on the phone. And today, I'm gonna show you how to mitigate that, okay? So guys, I mean, how many of y'all have ever been on the phone and then the first things you've ever said was low ball offer, or I'm not interested, or I need to talk to X, Y, Z. Some of you may not fully know how to handle those. And so today, guys, I'm gonna show you how my company does it and how I train my team to do it, which allows for us to close 10 plus deals every single month. And so guys, make sure if you get value from this, that you tell other people, that's the fee that we have here. If you laughed, if you thought this was funny, if you thought this was entertaining or educational, you got something from this, all I ask guys is that you tell somebody about it, all right? So if you're watching this right now, pay the fucking fee. And uh, I'll see you guys after the intro. Let's get it. Gave him some slight little wisdom for the time, told the bottom all goodbyes. I tell the top that you said hi. Sorry, miss your call. I've been living too much life. Always somewhere high, always somewhere in the sky, always fine, yeah. You see the leaves fall off. You thought the family tree would die, but these roots run deep below ground zero. All right, guys, there are three big objections that I see people get in this business all of the time. I've done thousands and thousands of hours of cold calling, and believe it or not. You know, these are some of the, 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 the main ones that I think that we all hear that cause some people to like freeze up like a deer in headlights. And I don't want you guys to be those people, okay? But first one, first and foremost, this is the low ball offer. That one right there is one of the like most common ones and they're typically made like right after or even right before you even get a chance to build rapport. They'll say, hey, are you those people that low ball people? Or are you the type of person that, oh, is that a, like that offer that you're giving me that's not good enough? You're low balling me, right? That's one of them. The next one that you'll get is the I'm not interested guy, okay? And that's very common. That one right there has got to be like 99% of the time when you're cold calling, you're gonna to talk to a lot of people and that's gonna be the first one that they say, okay? And that's very standard. You know, that's somebody who's not interested in why you're calling, you haven't really gotten that connection through. And I want y'all to know that this is a rule of thumb. Your first five seconds in a cold call buys you your next five. And so it's very important that your opening is solidified. So that way you don't get this I'm not interested person. You have to be able to relate to eliminate debate. And then the last one here and this one, oh my God, I cannot tell you, you could be building the most fire rapport. You could be like 80% of the way to getting a contract signed just to get slapped with need to talk to. Hey, I'm, you know, look, I like everything that you're saying, but uh, I need to talk to this person or I need to talk to this person or that person or X, Y, Z. And I'm going to show you guys today how y'all can go over this. So let's go ahead and start at low ball offer. All right. First off, seek first to understand then be understood. This plays so heavily into the motion of what we're doing here with the lowball offer, okay? First off, guys, and, and as you're making these cold calls, you're probably gonna get this a lot considering that we're buying properties at a discount, right? Now, rather than letting them go ahead and, and slap you with it, I want y'all to use this technique, and it's called objecting the objection. And so how many of you guys have ever had an objection where you were just like, oh, you know, well, you just try to overcome it with, with, with reality, right? But none of y'all ever try to push back at what they said. And so how many of you ever talk to someone and they say, oh, you know what? I'm lowballing. Like, you're lowballing me. You know, like, honestly, man, are you just one of those guys that lowball people? I want you to object the objection and then understand the reason why they're saying X, Y, Z, okay? Then you can try to be understood. But it starts off like this, okay? And let me tell y'all, you guys can use this. This is a technique that we use all the time. Objecting the objection, right? Lowball offer. Well, sir, aren't you one of those people that lowball all of us? Or man, your offer is too low, like you're lowballing me. I'm sorry, Mr. Seller. Are you the type of person who highballs people? Are you highballing me right now? Main reason why is, I think that my offer is fair and what I'm giving you right now is absolutely market value in its current condition. I saw this property down the street sell for $70,000. Your property, you're asking $90,000 for it and that property down the street is in the, the same exact condition as your property. So look man, I get it. You don't want to be low balled, but I don't want to be high balled either. Help me understand why you think that you should get $90,000 for your property. Then. I can be understood. At this point, guys, I've created the separation 
by objecting the objection and now it's time to pull them through. Pull them back in. Pull them back in by saying, help me understand why I'm lowballing you. And I'll tell you exactly where my offer is coming from. Now the guys that does come from experience, right? Like calling somebody a high baller, that's definitely like a, a unique technique. I don't think I've ever heard anybody in this space use. But it's so important that you don't just say, oh, well, you know what, my, 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 my offer is based on the condition of the house and yada, yada, yada. You're trying to justify something. You don't have to justify anything to these people that you're talking to. You do not work for them. They are not your boss, okay? So when you're doing something like this, and you say, well, look, are you one of those people that highball people? Like, you know, you're, you're asking a, a ridiculous amount for your property. I'm, help me understand how you, came, how you came to that number. At this point, guys, I've created the link in between the two. And with this, I will use it to pivot off to build more rapport and base myself off the situation. Now, look, if you need more money, tell me why. What's going on? Give me an idea of why you think my offer is not too high because maybe we're just not seeing eye to eye. And it could be something that they have personally going on, not just based on the condition of the home. When you dig deep for a solution, people will sacrifice equity for service. Oh, well, you know, I need more money to, to move out. Well, how about this, man? You know that if you're doing a wholesale deal, you're gonna make 10, 20 grand, right? Well, how about this, Mr. Seller? Look, I'll go ahead and I'll take a hit on that. I would love the opportunity to buy your property and I'll also pay for your moving expenses. If you need help, finding a place to live. This is where you utilize your Rolodex of, of resources. I have a realtor that I work with. Her name is Norma Lita. She's a real realtor. She's here in San Antonio. She has her own brokerage with Keller Williams Realty and she has like a branch of it. She helps all of our sellers get into new houses, right? And so guys, you have to have somebody like that because now I'm going to base the value that I'm bringing to the table on the services that I'm providing to justify my quote unquote low ball offer. And that's how you destroy objection number one. So boom. Are you highballing? Help me understand. Then connect it back and be understood. What is the reason you need more money for your property? Tell me why so that I can meet you with service and you can sacrifice equity by I'm giving you service and, and sacrifice of equity. See what I'm saying? So utilize that guys. This one right here, I'm not interested. I get this one all the time, okay? And look, this is where I want you guys to pull this out. What you're offering to the client is a non-obligation thing, all right? You want to give them an offer. This is how I always overcome this, okay? I ask for permission. That's number one. Well, Mr. Seller, look, I get it, man. Well, can I ask you something real fast? Let me ask you a question real quick. This is how you reset the tone, right? Okay, look, I get it. You're not interested. I understand. You probably get calls from people like me all the time. Do you mind? Because I call so many people. If I ask why, that right there allows for you to go back in and build that rapport again. So you're able to stabilize the situation. Well, look, what if it's because they haven't gotten the amount of money that they've been wanting for the property? What if they've been dancing around the idea, but there are other people that are involved right now and you have to figure out who those people are. What this part is, guys, is digging into the situation. That, I, I spelled situation so bad, but whatever. You guys get the, the word, right? So I'm not interested. Focus on this. Ask permission. Well, I get that you're not interested, Mr. Seller, but let me ask you a question. What if I were to give you a non-obligation cash offer right now? You don't have to sell me your property now, but I can at least tell you how much I'm willing to give you for it. And if it's a good number, you can call me back in a couple of weeks or a couple of months or in a couple of years. Here's my information. Write it down, slap it on your refrigerator, and I will be sure to get back to you with an honest offer on what you're wanting for that property. Guys, how crazy is that? I'm turning a not interested now into a full-blown opportunity. And that's what we want, guys. If you're gonna be in this business long-term, like myself, the seeds that you plant now are what's gonna create that traction that you're wanting in the future of your business. And so utilizing this strategy and maximizing your not interested leads is going to allow for you to either dig for the situation, connect with the seller, or at least leave them with an offer. And even if they still say they're not interested, well, look, Mr. Seller, look, I buy properties around your neighborhood all the time. I would love the opportunity to at least be the first person that you think about. We pay out a referral per every single person that tells us that someone has a property for sale. 
give me your email address. Now I'm collecting and gathering information and I will forward it over to you more information about my company and the referral program that we have. Just keep me in mind, man. Even if you don't want to sell, tell me of somebody who does want to sell. Now what did I just convert them into? Bird dogs. And now I'm capitalizing on that opportunity too. Well, look, guys, you know, another thing that I have is Deal Machine, right? And so, like, why not use that with this as well? Look, I, I know you're not interested, right? But I buy beat up houses. Maybe your house is in prime condition. If I gave you access to an app that I pay every single month for, and all you had to do was send me pictures of vacant houses, and you can, like, literally make 1500 bucks just by sending me all these photos of these vacant houses in your neighborhood, you know, w would you mind at least downloading this? I'll send you a link. You download it, it's free, it's a whole app. Whenever you see a crappy house, Put that in there and I will receive the notification that you've sent me over that, that prospect. If I skip trace that person and I get a hold of them and I end up buying that property, I'll still cut you a check. How about that? And so, you know, I love the thing about the bird dog idea because it still allows for you to create an opportunity in the I'm not interested. So that's how you get rid of the I'm not interested being in your way. So no longer are you letting that hold you back from creating opportunities? You're maximizing opportunities as you plow through your data. The next one. Guys, this is such a big one, and this is huge right here. Some of you guys mess up so heavily, you build so much rapport. You figure out the entire situation. You've asked permission. You've understood and you've under and you've and, and you've helped the person understand where you're coming from, right? This one right here is so heavy. Let me tell you something. You can eliminate like 90% of all debate by making sure at the beginning of the call that you have all parties on the phone. So anytime, I want y'all to eliminate this right from the beginning, okay? How do you destroy this objection? Number one, Mr. Seller, look, I get that you're interested in taking an offer from me. You know what I'm saying? You, you told us that you weren't interested before, but now you are. I gotta ask you something. Now I'm asking for permission. Am I talking to all the decision makers in regards to this transaction right now? I just wanna make sure that before we get into it, that you know, if we have to talk to a wife, or we gotta talk to a brother, or a sister, or a mother, or whoever, that everybody's on the same page. So if you can do me a favor, can you tell me right now that I'm talking to the right people? Are you the main decision maker in regards to this house? Do that right at the beginning of the call. And guess what, guys? You will have eliminated another objection. And this one's done within the first five seconds before you even get into the nitty gritty of whatever business deal that you're trying to create from this opportunity. So guys, that's how I destroy these three objections. I get over them all the time. I teach my team how to do this. If y'all are interested in getting this next level type of education, you want me to go over, I have about 300 of these objections and I've done a bunch of objection videos already on YouTube. You can join our private mastermind. We go over this shit literally all the fucking time. We meet twice a week. So if you want to meet with your boy personally twice a week, make sure you guys click the link in the description below. As always, thank you guys for watching and I'll catch y'all on the next video. Let's get it. I want the check. No, I, oh. check. Ooh. Ooh, no. I want the check. No, I, 